Hallelujah. All right. We've been teaching on what? Thanksgiving. As we prepare for Thanksgiving, we wanted to remind you and put you in remembrance of how important Thanksgiving is. So that's what I want to do today. Uh, Psalm 145 reads, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with what? Praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. That from Psalm 145. We're instructed to do what? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness is to all generations. Anybody can testify? Can you agree with me right now and say, Lord, we thank you for you are good. We thank you for your steadfast love endures forever. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness is to all generations. Hallelujah. So we don't just give thanks in vain. We're giving thanks because he deserves it. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, we read, In everything, give thanks for what? This is the will of of God in Christ Jesus. Many times we're asking for God's will. I want to know God's will. I want God to speak to me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is God's will. Amen. For you and for me. In everything. In every situation. That means the good ones and the not so good ones. And in this world, there are many not so good circumstances. But, but it's still profitable. In fact, it's extremely profitable when you're going through those not so good circumstances to make a choice that you are going to give thanks in it. Not necessarily for everything because some things that come to us are not from God, but God has promised that he will work all things together for our good. And so if we learn in every situation to give thanks, we will experience the grace of God, the strength of God to help us deal with those 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 unfavorable circumstances and the Bible says he will always cause us to triumph in Christ. Amen? But there's something about Thanksgiving that is so, so, so important. If you were to read the scriptures, I don't know if there's any command in scripture that is given more frequently by God to us than the command to give thanks. Perhaps I believe the only command that might be a be there more often occur more frequently is the command to fear not. Fear not. Give thanks. Why would God place such emphasis on giving thanks? I mean, hundreds and hundreds of times, Old Testament, New Testament, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Obviously, it must be that giving thanks is good for us. Amen. There's something about thanksgiving that benefits us, that is good for us. And, and because of his great love for us, he wants us to experience the practical benefits that come to human beings who know how to give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, science has done their own investigation. They, they've done their studies in order to determine what are some of the benefits of Thanksgiving. So just on a natural level, let me just quickly summarize it for the sake of time, but just on a natural, natural level, if even you are not a Christian, even if you didn't have the revelation of the spiritual benefits that accompany Thanksgiving, just the natural and, and, and physical benefits would be reason enough for you to cultivate gratitude. Here are some of the benefits. One, Thanksgiving will improve your mental health. Amen. Expressing gratitude has been linked to lower levels of depression, anxiety, stress. It can enhance your psychological well-being. How many people today are troubled because emotionally they're not doing well, psychologically they're not doing well? Well, science says, and the Bible reveals this, that one of the primary and practical benefits of being thankful, giving thanks, especially to God, is that it can lower your stress level, help you deal with 
with thoughts that cause depression and anxiety, and it can enhance your psychological well-being. That's a good reason right there to practice giving thanks to God. But then, of course, there's the physical benefit, the health benefits, again, because of time I have to rush, but it does all kinds of good things for our bodies, building our immune system, lowering our, our blood pressure, giving us better sleep quality, reducing symptoms of illness. So physically, when we're giving thanks and living thankfully and practicing thanksgiving, there are physical benefits, just the immune system alone. If your immune system is strengthened, there are so many diseases that by the grace of God, you avoid or you overcome because of your immune system. So one of the best medicines for your immune system is to be giving God thanks. Amen? Living thankfully. Good medicine. Amen? Thanksgiving is good for your relationships. It'll strengthen your relationships. Let me hurry up. Thanksgiving increases your resilience. Grateful individuals tend to exhibit greater resilience when facing the challenges and adversities of life. Gratitude can help individuals cope with stress, bounce back from setbacks, and maintain a positive outlook during difficult times. All right, so just some examples. We, we could go a little bit longer, but we're going to leave the, that alone. Let's look at now the spiritual benefits. The spiritual benefits. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for... Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with... By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving... Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So he didn't just say offer prayers. He says offer your prayers, and the prescription is with thanksgiving. You know, you go to the doctor, the doctor gives you medicine, the doctor says take this medicine with this. Amen? For the medicine to be effective, take it with food, etc. So God tells us that in every circumstance, in every situation, when we pray and we offer our petition to him, he says, do so with thanksgiving. And the result of that is that the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts, and your mind through Christ Jesus. So here we have thanksgiving producing, generating, giving us access to, causing us to tap into that incredible peace of God that can keep us in the midst of life's troubles and trials and tests. An amazing peace. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not the peace that the world gives, but I'm going to give you this incredible peace. In this world, you will have tribulation, but, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. So he offers us this tremendous peace. He gives us this peace, but he tells us this is how you tap into it. This is how you draw on my peace. It's with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So one of the greatest spiritual benefits that we derive from learning how to offer thanks to God and to practice thanksgiving to God is that we get to enjoy more and more of the peace of God that passeth understanding. And what that means is you can't explain how this person can have peace. You know, under the circumstances, what they're dealing with. How do you have peace in the midst of this? Well, it's the peace that God gives it's a supernatural peace. It's a gift of grace, amen, that God gives to us. And he says, here is how you tap into it. When you pray, pray with thanksgiving. One of the reasons why thanksgiving is so powerful in terms of producing peace is because when you're thanking God, your focus is no longer on your problems. Amen. If, if, if all I'm thinking about is what's going wrong in my life and all I'm thinking about is what's not working, that is going to rob me of joy and rob me of peace. But when I make the choice that, you know what, I'm going to give thanks. Now, you're not just giving thanks uh, like a machine, like a robot. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. No, you're giving thanks 
as you contemplate God's goodness. You're thanking God for specific things. You're thanking him for his steadfast love. You're thanking him for his, his, his faithfulness that is always there. You're thanking him for his presence. You're thanking him for his goodness. You're thanking him that he will never leave you nor forsake you. you. You're thanking him that as you go through this test and go through this trial, he's holding your hands and he's not going to let your hands go. You follow me? So we don't just offer, we don't just say thanks as, a, as robots or as machines. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You, you, do it, you do too much of that and you go crazy. Okay, because that's just being repetition, right? But you are thanking him specifically for, for things that you are recalling. And as you recall his blessings and you name them one by one, and you start thanking him one by one for your blessings, his blessing, his love, his goodness, in the midst of what you're going through, then you begin to experience God's peace. You hear me? So right now, if you haven't had peace for a long time, if your mind is really troubled and you're always anxious, afraid, ask yourself, have I been thanking God? Have I been truly recalling intentionally to my mind who God is and what God has done? Am I doing that and thanking him for it? Because I guarantee you if you start doing that intentionally, you will begin to experience the peace of God more and more. Amen? And those thoughts that seem to oppress you will diminish in your life. How many of you really know what I'm talking about? Do you? It, it, yeah, yeah. This is not just sermon, man. We have, we've, we've lived this. Hey, Amen. We've lived this. Hallelujah. You know, we can determine how things are going to impact us by whether we choose to give thanks or not. The doctor gives you medicine, take it. Hey, Amen. If God tells you to do this, do it. All right? So in every situation, if you want to grow and experience in the peace of God, learn to give thanks because as you thank God for who he is and what he's done, you're going to start to tap into that peace that passeth all understanding. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, we read, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed only. That's the power of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving shifts your focus from your problems, thanksgiving shifts your focus to God. Amen? And as it shifts your focus to God, it helps you to keep your mind stayed on him. And he then keeps you in perfect peace. By thanksgiving, I keep my mind on him. And then he then keeps my mind in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, stop murmuring, stop complaining. It doesn't change anything. Stop rehearsing your problems. We're not denying the problems, but stop rehearsing them because they rob you of peace. Amen? They rob you of joy. Amen? With thanksgiving, set your mind upon him. His goodness and mercy endures forever. You know, you know, you know David, said, David said, goodness and mercy will follow me. All the days of my life. Then, then, but when you look at David's life, <clears throat> what's that, David? Wait a minute now. <laughs> you were a fugitive running from Saul for so many years. He said, true goodness and mercy will follow you all the days. Then he says, you know, you, you, you committed adultery and your, son, your child died. Your own son rebelled against you. So when you look at David's life, you wonder, right? whether what David was saying was true. But listen to me. David didn't say goodness and mercy would be the only thing that would follow me. No, no, listen to me. In declaring goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, I'm not saying goodness and mercy would be the only thing that would follow me. There will be other things. But one thing I can be sure of, that, oh my goodness, no matter what I am facing, goodness and mercy are following me. So in the midst of this, I can choose to look at all that is wrong or I can remind myself that goodness and mercy are here. Amen? And I am going to rejoice because goodness and mercy will follow me in this trial, in this test, in this problem. 
goodness and mercy are with me and I'm expecting God's goodness and mercy to prevail in this situation on my behalf. So that's something you can give thanks for. No matter what you're going through, oh, goodness and mercy is here. Lord, I give you thanks that in the midst of all of this, I thank you, goodness and mercy will follow me. Goodness and mercy is following me into this trouble, will remain with me into the, in this problem, and I believe will deliver me out of this. I thank you. Say, everybody say, thank you, Jesus, for goodness and mercy which follow me all the days of my life. Listen to me. I don't know what you're dealing with right now, but I want to promise you goodness and mercy are there. Amen. Goodness is on one hand. Mercy is on the other. Give God thanks for goodness. Give God thanks for mercy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When the doctor gives you a bad report, say goodness and mercy, you're right here. I'm going to rely on you, goodness, God's goodness. I'm going to rely on you, mercy, God's mercy, to give me what I need to deal with this and to bring me through this victoriously. Amen. If you're having trouble in your family, in your home, remember your goodness and mercy will be with you and is with you in that situation. Thank God for that. You got that? Amen. Incredible peace. And then Thanksgiving has a powerful effect upon prayer. You could say Thanksgiving is the fuel that sets your prayer on fire. Or Thanksgiving is the, is the fuel that ignites your prayer and makes it effective and powerful. We all know how important prayer is, right? I mean, we do. The Bible says very clearly you have not because you ask not. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, you must ask. So we know that God has set up the system so that prayer is critical for us receiving and walking in the fullness of our inheritance and all the blessings. But when you look at the prayers in the, in the, in, in the Bible, some of the most effective, the most powerful prayers that I've given to us in Scripture, one of the things that you will notice is that Almost all the time, those prayers are permeated, are saturated with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. They begin with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving runs all through it. They end with thanksgiving. There's something about mixing thanksgiving or including thanksgiving in the prayers that we pray that seem to activate our prayers, set our prayers on fire, make our prayers more effective. Move the hand of God in extraordinary ways. And so there are so many examples. You, you know the story of Jonah, right? Jonah in the belly of the whale or the big fish, whatever that was. What a place to be. He described his condition and, and, and how hopeless it was. But in the midst of that, in, in, in Jonah chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, in the midst of the belly of the fish at the bottom of the sea. I know sometimes your circumstances and your test can seem like you're at the bottom of the sea. You're not there, but it's sometimes, sometimes you feel like you're there. Well, Jonah was really there. And the scripture says, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish. It's a good thing. You can pray no matter where you are. And God can hear you no matter where you are. I don't know where your problem has taken you. How far it has taken you. How deep it has taken you. How low it has brought you. But let me encourage you. No matter where you are. Where the trouble has brought you. You can pray. Amen. From where you are from the bottom of the sea and God will hear you. You know, thank God for cell phones where sometimes you get to these places and there's no connection. Thank God, God is always online and you can always reach him. And hallelujah, you, no matter how deep you go, how far you go, are you hearing me? He is there. Goodness and mercy will, is with you. He is there and you can cry out of that 
place and God who is everywhere will hear you. So there's Jonah. He's in the, in the belly of the fish. He's at the bottom of the sea. And he prays, but he doesn't just petition. The Bible says, when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. And my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Yeah. Amen. He prayed, but he offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving from the bottom of the sea in the belly of the fish. And the verse ends in, verse, in, cha in chapter 2, verse 10. It says, so the Lord spoke to the fish. And he vomited Jonah into dry land. Oh, may the Lord speak to your trouble. May the Lord speak to your problem. May the Lord speak to your test. May the Lord speak to your challenge. May the Lord speak into your circumstances. And out of death may he bring life. Out of hopelessness may he give you hope. Out of what appears to be defeat may he bring a mighty victory. Amen. May the Lord turn that thing around that was intended to destroy you. And use it to place you where you need to be to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I want to encourage you. No matter what you're going through, God is a God that hears and answers prayer. Pray, supplicate, cry out to God for help. But do it with thanksgiving because there's something about thanking God that seems to energize, empower, ignite our prayers and cause impossible things. To become possible. Amen. And so we see thanksgiving permeating prayer. Old Testament, I mean, Psalms full of thanksgiving and prayer. Paul, if you look at Paul's prayers, let me just read one of that, one of Paul's prayers to you. He says, I always thank God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. And so when he was praying for the Corinthians, he always Thank God for them. For the Ephesians, Paul says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you, you my brother. So his intercession for the saints was, was saturated with prayer. When he was praying for the believers, I thank you, God, for them. I thank you for your love for them. I thank you that they're growing. I thank you that you are at work in there. You're changing them. You're revealing Christ to them. I thank you for what you're... It was, it was his intercession was just full of thanksgiving, full of thanksgiving, full of thanksgiving. Even for the Corinthians, and you know the Corinthians was a very messed up bunch of... In the natural, right, they were doing all kinds of stuff. But when Paul prays, I thank God for you. Now, he understood the power of thanksgiving and what thanksgiving can do to prayer and what prayer then can do before God. Are you hearing me? So let me encourage you guys. Enter his course with thanksgiving. Let thanksgiving saturate, characterize, permeate your prayer because there's something about thanksgiving. There's a mystery about it that helps to ignite and cause our prayers to be more effective. Let me suggest to you two reasons why I think Thanksgiving is so powerful when it comes to prayer. What are the two indispensable things that God requires for us to receive from him? Well, one of them is humility. For the Bible says God will resist the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen? If you want to receive unmerited favor, if you want to experience God's grace and power in your life, if you don't want God to resist you, then the, one of the indispensable requirements is you've got to approach God with a spirit of humility. Are you hearing me? God does not respond to pride. He does not respond to our sense of self is sufficiency and independence. Amen? If I want God to hear, if I want to experience God's grace and power in my life, then what I got to do is humble myself. The scripture says, 
Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And then he will do what? Exalt you in due season. It says concerning the devil, you should submit to God, humility, and then resist the devil. And he will flee. If you try resisting the devil without first humbling yourself, the devil will deal with you proper. You're no match. I'm no match. We're no match. Okay? So part of receiving strength and power to overcome the devil is for us to humble ourselves and admit, God, I need you. Without you, I can do nothing. I'm completely dependent upon you. Are you hearing me? Humility is critical to tap into God's grace. Amen? And, and so because of that, thanksgiving ignites our prayer because one of the things that thanking God does is it is actually an admission of our dependence upon him. It is, in fact, an act of humility. So one of the ways you humble yourself before God so that God then can empower you is with thanksgiving. Amen? Because when you're saying, thank you, God. Thank you for this. Thank you for salvation. Oh, God, thank you for wisdom. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, I thank you because when you're doing that, what are you actually doing? You are humbling yourself. You're admitting that you have nothing that you didn't receive. That everything you have came from him. You're saying, God, the only reason I'm here today is because what you did for me yesterday. Thank you. And the only way I will get to tomorrow is because of what you are going to do for me today. Thank you. Lord, without you, there is no tomorrow for me. So thank you. I'm depending upon without you, there is no victory over sin. Thank you. There is no healing or victory over my sicknesses. No victory. Lord, thank you. What are you doing? You are humbling yourself. And the Bible says when you humble yourself, then you can experience God's grace. Are you, are you, you following me? Yes. Absolutely. So thanksgiving is so critical and it adds fuel to your prayer because it humbles you. But then thanksgiving not only introduces the ingredient of humility, it also introduces the ingredient of faith. Faith is the other element that is essential for prayer. By thanksgiving, you're both accomplishing the humility as well as you're releasing faith. So it brings humility and faith together. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thanksgiving is the language of faith. Huh? It's the language of faith. When, 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 your faith. when your faith is increasing or your faith is growing, the faith expresses itself with thanksgiving. Are you here? I mean, and so you and I have to learn to speak the language of faith, which is the language of thanksgiving. Jesus spoke that language. He spoke it very well. When he was facing the, the need, the challenge of having over 5,000 men plus women and children and only five loaves and two fish, what did he do? He knew that he now to receive this miracle, to tap into the grace of God that is here. Amen. I need to speak the language of faith because without faith it's impossible to please God and he who comes to God must believe. Okay, so I got to speak the language of faith. What did Jesus do? He didn't take the five loaves and two fish. Oh, that's all we got, five loaves and two fish. How are we going to? No, his disciples were saying that. His disciples were talking all that nonsense. But Jesus understood how spiritual things work. Amen. And he took those, the five loaves and two fish and instead of complaining about how little he had, the Bible says he lifted up before God and he said, Father, he, thank you. The Bible says he blessed. And the word blessed is the same word for thanking. So when you're thanking God, you are releasing the blessings of God upon that which you are giving thanks for. Amen. And so he spoke the language of faith, which is the language of thanksgiving. And said, I thank you, God, that you have blessed us with five loaves and two fish. 
And I know, Lord, that because of who you are, the five loaves and two fish will be more than enough. Thank you for what you're about to do with the five loaves and two fish. He began to thank God. He was speaking the language of faith. And you know the miracle that happened, right? He gave a little to them as they went, as it was being used up, it was being multiplied. That's one of Dr. Morty's story also. Amen. Well, food is being multiplied as we give thanks. That's the language of faith. At the grave of Lazarus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now he's beginning to stink. And Jesus, the Bible says, lifted up his voice and said, Father, I thank you. You have already heard me. What was Jesus doing? Bringing humility and faith together. And thanksgiving accomplishes that in our lives. So you want to walk in humility before God so that you can consistently be a recipient and experience God's grace abound with thanksgiving. That's humility at work. You want to continually be releasing faith unto God? Abound in thanksgiving. That's the language of faith. Because when you're thanking God, you're saying, God, I trust you. Amen. God, I believe what you have said. I believe what you've promised. I believe what you've already accomplished in redemption. I believe you're with me. I believe you're not going to leave me. I believe you will not forsake me. I believe you will cause me to triumph. Thank you. I believe you will never, never leave me alone. Thank you. That's faith speaking. Hallelujah. So when you, when you understand how Thanksgiving brings together these two powerful elements of humility and and faith, you see why giving thanks is so important and how thanking God should permeate your prayer life. You getting something out of this? How much time I got? Five minutes? You took all my time, now you want to give me five minutes. All right. So I hope I've established at least for you something that will motivate you like never before, to learn. Last week we talked about the importance of giving thanks horizontally. Today we're talking about the importance of giving thanks to God. Continually. There are the natural, physical benefits, but then man, the spiritual benefits. That supernatural peace that comes to you. Amen? Spiritual benefit, that's combining the forces of humility and faith with our prayers, igniting our prayers, offering the kind of prayers that God can answer. The kind of prayers that God can take and use and work on to cause wonderful things to happen for us. Ah, my goodness, I'm reminded of, of Paul and Silas in prison. Oh, my goodness. What did they do? They had an opportunity to complain. They had an opportunity to feel real sorry for themselves. They had an opportunity to say, God, after all we've done, this is where we ended up. But they made a choice. Say to your neighbor, Thanksgiving, giving thanks to God requires a decision, a choice. Amen? You cannot base your Thanksgiving on how you feel. You've got to remember what is true in spite of what you feel and focus on God and not upon yourself and make a decision to give God thanks because God is worthy of our praise. So in the midst of the, 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 the thing, they begin to do what? Sing. Thank God. Praise God. My goodness. And as they were thanking and praising God, you know what happened, right? The prison doors opened. And they were set free. But Paul didn't run out. Which tells me that was not the reason he was thanking God. He wasn't thanking God so the doors could open. 
He was thanking God because God was worthy. He was thanking God because even in the prison, he found a reason to give God thanks. He wasn't saying, this this is so intolerable, I need to get out. God, you need to deliver me. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I want him to send the angels to deliver me. No. In the midst of the their prison experience in the dark dungeon while they were going through this valley of the shadow of death Paul found a reason to be thankful he was counting his blessings one by one and thanking God because he had enough reasons to thank God in spite of the fact that he was in prison he didn't forget all the benefits of the Lord he didn't forget everything God had done he did not forget his salvation amen he did not forget all the benefits of his redemption. He did not forget that even if he, whether he lived or died, he was the Lord's. That nothing could separate him from Christ. That he had eternal life. That if they killed him, all they would do would be sending him to heaven early. He, they were not praising God so their prison doors can open. They were praising God because there was so much to give thanks for. But as they did that, again, that's the power of thanksgiving. God moved in their behalf, opened the prison doors, and gave them another reason to give him thanks. Come on, you can find something to give God thanks for. While you're in the dungeon, while you're in the prison, while you're in the dark, while things that you can find something to give God thanks for. And if you will find something to start giving God thanks for, who knows why you're thanking him? Who knows if he will not send his angel to deliver you? Who knows if he will not cause the doors of the prison to open? Who knows if he will not show up with power? Are, are you hearing me? With glory? Who knows what he will do? Maybe he'll take that flag and he'll go to turn it into the American flag. Who knows what he will do when you are just praising and glorifying him? Something you didn't even think about. Something you didn't expect. He will just surprise you. Yeah! Now they told me my time is over, but I'm going to use my authority as a bishop. Thank God you made me a bishop. <laughs> now I'm, going to, I'm just going to take up, I'm not going to do everything else, but I'm going to give you one thing. Because hear me, God wants us to praise Him. And, and God has given us ways by which we can give Him thanks that would truly bring him glory and give us the benefits that, that, that we need for life and godliness. We are to give thanks with our words. The fruit of our lips. So learn to say thank you. Learn to say thank you all the time to the Lord. Say it to him. Sing it to him. And the scripture also tells us one of the ways we say thank you with our words is we tell of the goodness of the Lord. Tell it to your friends. Tell it to your neighbors. Tell it to your fellow church members. Don't be quiet. Tell the Lord. Sing to the Lord. But tell of the goodness of the Lord. Every time you're telling somebody of God's goodness to you, you're saying thank you, God. So words, 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 words. But hear me. If I give you $5, listen to me. If I give you $5 and you say thank you, I give you $500, you say thank you. I give you $5,000, you say thank you. I give you $500,000, you say thank you. I give you $5 million. All you say is thank you. Come on, man. Can't you see the difference between five million and five dollars? Come on, can't you see the difference between five million and five dollars? If the same thing you said to me when you, I gave you five million, it's the same thing you said to me when I gave you five dollars. Something is wrong 
with your gratitude meets us. Something is wrong. You do not know how to appreciate the difference. You need to learn that there's a difference between $5 and $5 million. The amount of effort, the amount of sacrifice it took for me to give you $5 million. $5 cannot compare. Are you hearing me? Now listen to me. I'm going to make an important point. Thank God you can thank him with words. But what God has done for you, come on, man. If all you are going to give God is thank you with words, when he has given his only begotten son, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. When God went so far as to give his only begotten son in order to save you from your sins, deliver you from hell, if God has come and put his spirit in you and God has prepared a place for you so that whether you live or you die, you're ever going to be with the Lord. If the Lord has delivered you from hell and prepared a place for you in eternity, come on, man. All you're going to do is say thank you with words. Is that going to be the extent of your gratitude? No, 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 no. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. If you give me $5 million and all I say to you is I respond to it in the same way I respond when you give me five, something is wrong. I am an ungrateful person. And if all we are content with in terms of saying thank you to God is to give him words, we are ungrateful. And so hear me. We don't want to worship God and give God thanks with words of our mouth. We give God thanks with the works of our hands. Part of saying thank you is to get up and to use the gifts that God has given you to serve him. Are you hearing me? To serve others in his name, to serve his church, to serve the world through his church. Every time you are serving and doing something with your hands and with your bodies, you are saying thank you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable act of worship. The scripture says in Colossians chapter 3, we should give thanks to God. And he says, in all things, we should give thanks with our, what, that whatever we do with our word and with our deeds, we should be giving thanks unto the Lord. It's not enough to speak words. The words of our lips, the words of our mouth, but the works of our hands are part of our thanksgiving. So let me ask you a question. What are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your bodies? How are you saying thank you to God with your body? How are your service and your acts of service demonstrating how grateful you are to him? If you didn't say thank you, could I tell you were thank you? You were grateful, excuse me, just by observing what you're doing with your life? But let me push you one step further. If all you're doing is offering him words, doing works of service, he wants something else. He wants your heart. Not, he wants your mouth with words. He wants your, your works with your hands. And he wants your heart. Perhaps more than anything else, he wants you to worship him with your heart. But there's somewhere where Jesus is where your treasure is. No, let me, let me say it. There's somewhere where Jesus is, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So, so listen, God doesn't want your wealth, but he wants your heart. But what he's saying is, your heart isn't going to go anywhere that you are not willing to put your wealth towards. So does he have your heart? Well, he has your heart if he has your wealth. He 
You're saying thank you from your heart. If you're speaking words with your mouth, you are doing works with your hands, and my goodness, you're worshiping him with your wealth. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? Not the issue of blood, the alabaster box? What caused her, her, her thanksgiving to stand out? She came with words, but she went beyond words. She, she went beyond words. She went to works of service with her hands because she actually washed his feet and anointed his hair. So he was, she, was, she was worshiping him with her words. She was giving thanks with her hands and her service. But what made it really, really stand out was when she went beyond just words. Words were important. I'm not saying leave those words out. But they're not enough just by themselves. Not appropriate when you consider the level of sacrifice that he made for us. Okay for a $5 blessing. But not okay when someone gave their life for you. So she goes beyond the, the words. She goes beyond her works. And she brought her wealth. The alabaster box was representative of her wealth. And she broke that alabaster box. And that was what got the attention of the Pharisees and the disciples, uh, all of them. Because when she did that, she was really now demonstrating that Jesus also had her heart. You cannot worship with your heart. You cannot say thanks with your heart if you cannot release your wealth. If you cannot say thank you, if you cannot be generous with, with your possessions, you can never say thank you from your heart. Everybody say sila. Say we got it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We understand the power of thanksgiving. And we understand hopefully better. How we should be saying thank you to God. In light of what God has done for us. Every head bowed. Every eye closed very quickly. If you're here today and you have not yet received the gift of salvation, or if you're watching online and you have not yet received the gift of salvation, remember God gave his son for you. The gift of salvation and eternal life is the greatest gift that could ever be offered. It'll make the greatest difference in your life, not just for a moment, but for eternity. Where will you spend the rest of your days on earth? And where will you spend the rest of your days beyond earth? It has to do with the decision you make right now concerning Jesus. Jesus died for your sins because you are a sinner. and You could not pay for your own sins. You were under judgment. Jesus died to satisfy the law and provide you forgiveness of sins. God accepted the sacrifice of Jesus' blood as full payment for your sins and mine. God offers you total forgiveness right now and will deliver you from the condemnation of the law forever. If you choose even now to repent of your sins and to place your faith in the only one who can save your soul, Jesus Christ. If you have not done that, do it now. Acknowledge you're a sinner. Acknowledge you cannot save yourself. That's humbling yourself. And then I'll say, Lord Jesus, I place my faith in you. And I ask you to be my Savior, my Lord. If you would do that, Christ will come into your life. And you'll be changed from the inside out. And you'll be forgiven of all of your sins. You'll receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask you, if you're here right now, you say, Bishop, I want to receive Jesus as my Savior, because I'm not certain of my salvation, but I want to be certain. Or I know I'm, a, I'm not saved, and I want to be saved. 
would you just raise your hand and if you're watching online also you can acknowledge that need right there all right praise God praise God if you're watching online you can pray this prayer as well. So church, let's pray with those who need this prayer, those who are giving their lives to Christ. Would you please help me right now? Say, Father God, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I cannot save myself. But today, I hear the gospel. Jesus died for me. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. But I cannot save my soul. I place my faith, Lord, in you. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer from your heart and you made that confession from your heart, heaven heard, the good news is your sins are all forgiven. A miracle has happened. Christ has saved your soul. And he will be your savior forever as you trust him. Now you need to grow. You need to grow in your knowledge of him. You need to grow to know him. And we want to help you do so. So please contact us using the information that is being provided right now online. Contact us so that we can provide you with some further help and information. If you're here today and if you pray that prayer to receive Christ as your savior or hear me. If you desire to make this your church home, you desire to make this your church home, and you want more information about that, would you raise your hand? I want to make this my church home. I'd like, Bishop, for you to give me some information. Anybody? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. All right, well, bless you. So every one of you, uh, remember, we have an opportunity every day to share Christ wherever we are. All right? So please, let the Lord use you. Keep sharing Christ with those you meet. Pray with people. Minister to people. Invite people to church so that they can hear the gospel and be saved. And one of the things we're going to ask you to do as well, so please, you know, these messages are recorded. They're online. One of the things that you can do and uh, we can do as partners to get this gospel to as many people as possible is for you to make it a priority every week to share the messages that are being preached here with your friends and all those who are connected with you on social media. Help us get this word out so others can be saved. In Jesus' name. And everybody said...